Rainy Day Productions has found that the fraction of the population in a market that buys tickets to their monster truck shows can be accurately approximated by 50 divided by P squared, where P is price as long as price is above $15 per ticket. They are considering putting on a new show in a market with a population of 1 million people in a stadium that can seat up to 20,000 people with a variable cost per ticket purchased of $20. The first question says, what is the profit function for this show if it is not sold out? So we're going to ignore any capacity constraints and just find profit. Well, we know that profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost, which can also be written like this, price minus marginal cost times quantity, where quantity is the fraction of the population that buy a ticket times the size of the population. So our profit function is this. Now, in order to match it to one of the answer choices, we're going to have to algebraically manipulate it a small bit. So we multiplied through the 50 to the 1 million. We changed the order of things a little bit, but they're all, it's all multiplication, so that's perfectly legal. And we put the P squared underneath everything. This, this is just to match it to one of the answer choices, but we haven't changed anything. The next question says, what is the profit function for the show if it is sold out? Well, if the show is sold out, then we know that the quantity that we are gonna sell is gonna be equal to our maximum capacity. And the question tells us that the stadium can seat up to 20,000 people, so our maximum capacity is 20,000. In this case, profit would be equal to Q, 20,000, times price minus marginal cost. And price minus marginal cost hasn't changed here. What price maximizes profit is our final question. Well, first we need to go back to our original profit function and make sure to check our constraint, our capacity constraint. So our profit function was this. We can rearrange this a little bit because it's going to, to, mathematically it's going to be easier if we have that P squared out of the denominator and into the numerator. And anytime we want to do that, we got to change the sign on the exponent. So we can rewrite it like this. And at the same time, I've distributed through my 50 million. So I, time, I multiply 50 million by P and 50 million by negative 20. And I move my P squared to the numerator. Now I can di distribute through my p raised to the negative 2 to get this. When I, just, when I multiply 50 million p times p to the negative 2, I add exponents. So 1 minus 2 is going to give me negative 1. So I get 50 million p to the negative 1 minus 1 billion p to the negative 2. I've just distributed that through. Now I'm ready to take my derivative with respect to p. Well, I my first component here is going to be 50 million times negative 1, which was the exponent, so negative 50 million, p raised to the negative 2, because I subtract 1 from the exponent. And my second component, likewise, it's going to be 1 billion times negative 2, so that was a negative 1 billion times a negative 2, which gives me a positive 2 billion, now times p to the negative 3, because that p to the negative 2, we subtract 1 from the exponent to get p to the negative 3. We know that we're, we, we're going to set this equal to zero. So we can do a little trick to help us mathematically solve this. As long as we do the same thing to both sides of the equation, we haven't changed anything. It's a legal math move. So we're going to multiply everything through by p raised to the positive 3. Now on the left side, 0 times p to the positive 3, that doesn't change anything. That's still 0. But on the right side, the negative 50 million p to the negative 2 times p to the 3 is just going to give us negative 50 million times p. And the 2 billion p to the negative 3 times p to the 3, well, we're going to add those exponents and get p to the 0, which is the same thing as just 1, because any number raised to the 0 is simply 1. Now we're ready to solve this. We add 50 million p to each side, and we divide through by 50 million, and we find that the price that we should charge is $40. But we need to check our capacity constraint. So we know that quantity is equal to this. When we plug in our 40, we can solve for our quantity. And we see that our quantity is 31,250. Well, remember that we can only seat 20,000 people in this venue. So our capacity constraint is broken. In this case, we, need to, we know that our quantity is going to be 20,000 people. So we need to find the price that sells 20,000 tickets. So we can go ahead and plug in 20,000 for Q here and solve for price. So we multiply each side through by P squared to get it out of the denominator. And we divide through by 20,000. And we find that P squared is equal to 2,500. 
So when we take the square root of each side, we find that our optimal price to sell 20,000 tickets is $50.